Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part seven of my WordPress featured content tutorial where I will teach you how to do just about anything with WordPress and in the process create this nice featured content tool. Well, if you haven't seen the previous tutorials, definitely watch them. And what we're going to need to do in this tutorial is actually create all the HTML and CSS and all that stuff in here dynamically every single time somebody creates a new featured content post. And as you can see, there's three of these. There's a total max of 15. However, we want to make it work if there's only five or 10. And in this tutorial, I'm going to create all that HTML and CSS dynamically inside of WordPress. So from the last tutorial, inside of this function we created last entity MBE image create, I'm actually going to put all of my code in there. Later on, I'm going to set it up so that all this stuff is automatically updated whenever they save a new post in the category of featured. Boy, that sounds confusing, and it kind of is. But either way, if you just watch this tutorial just to figure out a couple really cool things about WordPress, that'll get you a long, long way to creating really cool stuff with WordPress. So what we're going to do inside of that function is scroll way, way, way down to the bottom of it. And the first thing I'm going to do is get an object that contains all the posts in the category featured. So I'm going to go call this post featured and I'm going to say get term by this is a function inside of WordPress and I'm going to say name and then I'm going to provide it with the name. Remember everything will go into the featured content if it is in the category featured and if you can't see this you can definitely show it full screen. This is an HD movie. It'll look much better that way. And then we're going to type in category right like that. And that's going to give me an object that's going to provide me access to every single post that is in the featured category. And we're going to create this guy here in a minute. So I do a little bit of work ahead of time. Then I'm going to create a new variable called entity post featured. And here I'm going to make sure that I only receive a maximum number of 15 posts because that's all that my tool allows for. And how you do that is call post featured, which I just created, followed by dash and that bracket and count. And it's going to tell me how many posts popped back from that query. And I'm going to say, if it's greater than 15, I want the value of this variable to be set at 15. And if not, I want it to be set at whatever this is. So here I'm just monitoring how many posts came back and I'm making sure that there is a maximum of 15 posts. That's all. Then I'm going to call my function that's going to create all of the stuff you see on the right side of the screen dynamically every single time somebody creates a new post in the featured category. I'm going to pass over to it the number of posts that fit that requirement. And that's all that I need to do there. I can bring this guy up here and close off that function. Now we're going to actually create all of the code that's going to create this guy over here. So let's scroll this up, open up PHP, close off PHP, and the name of this guy is going to be NTT, make da 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 da. So come in here, I have to make a new function like, like that. I'm going to get the number of posts that are in the featured category. Now I'm going to figure out how many featured content pages I should make knowing that I need a minimum of five posts per page. So how do you do that? I go NTT underscore, just creating a variable is equal to, and I'm going to say floor, which is going to chop off any decimals inside of PHP pages divided by five. So it's going to divide whatever's passed over. So if there's the number of, like to say, 11 on posts is passed over, it's going to divide it by 5, which is going to shoot back 2 point whatever, and it's going to chop off the decimal. So I'm always going to have everything in increments of 5. So that's what that does. Then I'm going to create this guy that's going to be an array. So I'm just creating an empty array here. Nothing that sophisticated. And now I'm going to get the URL for my plugin directory. How you do that is go WP plugin URL. This is WordPress forward slash dot and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a string replace which is PHP base name make a reference to the actual plugin which that's what I'm doing here with underscore underscore file quotes and I'm going to put in the actual location here for my plugin folder this is at all confusing don't worry about it what it just simply does is it returns my plugin directory that's all it does so you could just copy and paste this code you don't necessarily need to understand exactly how it works then I'm going to issue a custom query that's going to output all my titles for all my featured content articles and a whole bunch of other different things and like before to issue these queries I need to hijack the WP query object however so that I can use it later I'm going to store its current contents in a temporary file and then I'm going to create my version of it by setting it to null. Then I'm going to create a brand new WP query object and then post featured. I'm going to take the total number of pages that there's going to be and I'm going to get the total number of posts that's going to be displayed 
and that's going to be multiplied times five. So this is the total number of posts. Remember, we, we did this up here with floor to decide how many total pages we were gonna need. Well, here, this is gonna tell me how many total posts are going to be needed. And then I'm gonna issue my query, and I'm gonna say posts per page is equal to, I'm gonna jump out to WordPress. I'm gonna go posts featured count, that's going to give me the total number of posts we have here, being that the category name is equal to featured. So that's a query that I'm sending directly to WordPress. And then what I'm going to do is cycle through all these different pages and set the current post number to 1, because that's how it's going to default. I'm going to scroll this up a little bit. And then I'm going to issue a while loop that's going to cycle through everything. And this you have seen before, which is going to cycle through as long as there are posts that are returned from that query that I just issued. I'm going to call the post, which is going to give me all the information I need for each of the posts. And then I'm going to say that I want to output the title of the post. I'm going to save this inside of my array that I created, NTT post number. So this is going to be the first post. That's why I set it to one by default. It's going to be incremented down below before the while loop ends. And then if you want the title to be sent to you from WordPress, you just go get the title and then you go post dash forward slash ID, which is going to give you the ID for the title or of the post, I mean. Then I want to retrieve the value of the excerpts and trim this to 330 characters. So that's going to be this guy right here. All this is being created dynamically. So it's going to be created dynamically every single time somebody makes a new post, as long as it is in the featured category. So I knew I'm doing some really crazy stuff here, guys, but no one's ever done this, and I just thought I'm doing it. Get the excerpt. This is how you get the excerpt from WordPress. And then... If I want to shorten that excerpt, I'm going to call the substring function inside of PHP, take the long excerpt that I just created, and just take out the first, from the first character to the 330th character, right like that. Then I'm going to call NTT, feature content, info, and I'm going to store that inside of that guy. And I can just copy this. So I'm putting everything inside of arrays, so it'll be really easy for me to access this information in a later period. Set this to 1, NTT, short, excerpt, then I'm going to get the URL that is going to link to the post right there. And I'm going to store this in this multi-dimensional array in the second spot. And if you want to get the link to the post, you call a function called get permalink post dash ID, right like that. And then I'll get you what you need. Then I want to retrieve the URL for the featured image, which is saved as a meta value. We created this a while back. So I'm going to go entity post underscore ID, which is equal to, say I want to get the ID for this current post that I'm working with right here. Then I'm going to call NTT featured image is equal to, and if I want to get a meta value that is stored inside of here, and the meta value that I'm talking about is this meta value that I created here previously, right here. So here's the gazelle specific things. So this is what I'm going to do for each one of these posts that's created. I'm going to pull this meta value out of here, which is the location of the featured content image. That's what we're doing. Okay, so how I do that, I go get post meta NTT, post ID, which is the current post that's being displayed. And then I gave that meta value NTT MBE image as a name, but you have to put that forward slash there. And we're going to type in true. And then we're going to close that off. And now that I have the value of that, I'm going to store it in my array that will be used later on in the third part of that guy, featured image. Now here, what I'm going to be creating is this guy right here. Previously, we shrunk down the featured content image. This was two tutorials ago using a tool called Tim Thumb. Well, I have to actually create all of that code directly inside of here. And this is actually what it's going to look like. So if we scroll down here and I dump this inside of here, what I need to create this time is all of this stuff right here. I have to link to the Tim Thumb function that's going to automatically shrink the featured content image down, save it in the cache. It's going to do a ton of things, but I have to create all of this content dynamically, remember. So I'm going to start off posting that inside of there, and then this is going to be equal to 4 is equal to, and I'm going to go image source is equal to, and then I'm going to put double quotes and then single quotes and put a dot. I'm going to say blog info. I want to find the template directory because that's where I have Tim Thumb stored. So how do you do that in WordPress? You call template directory inside of the blog info function. And then that ends that. Well, actually, I'm going to copy this because we're going to put more inside of here. And I'm going to put a dot operator inside of there so that it automatically appends to the end of it. And here I'm going to go Tim Thumb, Tim Thumb dot PHP followed by source is equal to close that off. Then I'm going to go NTT. I'm going to say Tim Thumb, I want you to take the featured image. 
again, don't forget the dot operator. Then you have to tell Tim Thumb the height that you want and the width that you want, and if you want it to be cropped, which I don't know why you wouldn't want it to be, you put ZC is equal to one, and we're gonna go Alt is equal to, and then we're actually gonna close that off, and then we're gonna get some more information, being the title. I'm just gonna go Control Paste that in there. So if I wanna grab the title that I created previously, which is zero, see, get the title. See, I'm using that down side here. And I'm actually gonna close that off, scroll up, and let's create some more. Remember, dot operator. And then we got to define some HTML in here. Make sure that the height is also going to be equal to 48. And so is the width. And then we're going to go title is equal to. And then we're going to put the title in here. So we just got to change this to zero. Get rid of that. Dot operator. Doink. Like that. And then end that. And then end this. And then close that off. Right like that. And then at the end of this, we have to call NTT. Post. Num. And we're going to automatically increment that. And then we're going to end our while loop. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to take all this information that I stored in these arrays and automatically generate all this HTML. Pretty cool stuff. I'll leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.